Ooh, this one is really heavy. Hmm. Interesting one. It's a time for... Package from China. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at something very strange I recently picked up from AliExpress. This thing is called the Varpark. And this is like a game system that you can plug and play, or let's say a light gun situation. It's very strange and I just wanted to pick it up. Like always, there was not a lot of description. So I was more like, you know, this is going to be one of those random like purchases that we're going to pick up. And maybe it's going to be absolutely crap or it's going to be something really fun. It came in a completely bust up box, like always, because they didn't pack it up good enough. But let's see what we're going to get in here. It's going to get in a very big plastic bag. But man, this thing looks kind of futuristic. But what are we going to get with this VAR Park? Yeah, this seems to be a product that is a plug and play solution that we can just play on any television. So we don't need a CRT. But I was really curious, how does this work out? Is this like working with a sensor bar or is this just a different kind of technology? Let's see what we're going to get inside the package of sir. Oh man, everything is completely bust up. So what are we going to get actually is of course the Toyo Paper Manual. Let's take a close look at it first. Let me can find some more information about it. Ooh, it is in English, so that is good. So here we do have like the gamepad. So it seems to be we're having two gamepads. And this is the USB with the interface and everything in it. The TF card slot or the SD card slot. And here a quick overview of the product itself. The gaming gun key description. Uh, yeah, bullet replenishing is the key number one. Or it's more like a shotgun thing going on. So that is quite interesting. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Let's do that first. But let's also check out what we're going to get in the box. So here having the device itself, this is a one player thing. With first, oh man, this thing weighs quite heavy, I can tell you that. It comes with a normal micro switch. There is not bo no button at all, it's only at the right. And, and we have a reload like a shotgun, so that's pretty damn cool. We do have like some buttons on here that says on and off with a slider. And that's basically what we're going to get in the inside. Okay, let's see what we're going to get with the controllers itself, because this thing also has the option to play video games. Yeah, that is something we're going to check out in the video, but the, this is a very strange combination. I think you need to use this thing in one hand and use the right hand for, I'm guessing, just your typical like light gun games. So, this is a very strange thing. It's a very strange piece of technology. In here we need two AAA batteries, so this is the one that we're going to add to this. And let's see how it actually plays. The dongle itself feels very cheap. Okay, that's kind of funny. It just says hard disk for game. Okay. And here we're having the SD card. It has nothing to do with an hard disk. And let's check out 60 gigabyte. There is no brand. So maybe it's smart to make a backup because these cheap cards can get corrupted over time. And then we're having the micro USB because this thing needs an additional 5 volt. You can get it from the television or get yourself a 5 volt normal charger. There was one thing I was really curious about with these plug and play things. Sometimes we have the problem that doesn't fit. My port is just like not in that port that we have seen with my older monitors, but we can just plug it in like that. Another thing I just wanted to see if I'm going to plug it into the USB port. Do we have anything going on over there? Does it even work? So let's plug it in here, give it some juice. Let's plug it in the HDMI port and let's power on the system itself. All right, so let's take a close look at the menu and what is quite interesting. So when you're looking at this, so plug and play ready, that's absolutely true. So when you're getting the controller itself, you need to hold it in this direction, horizontal. Otherwise, we're not going to have any, we're just going to have a weird situation when you need to hold it in one hand. Another interesting thing, it says, please purchase the tomato sensory gun accessory to activate this function. Inside the package, we're going to get ourselves a tiny screwdriver because the bottom part, we're finding the battery compartment is not going to be a very comfortable thing. Let's unscrew the screw and let's get the batteries in here. But it's quite interesting how this software works. But also combined with the hardware, you need to turn on the light gun and then you can see the icon turns in color. The light gun games are basic and they're more of the same, but they are kind of fun. 
They start slowly with a very easy level, but later on they're getting very challenging. In total we're going to get two pages, they're not like many different games. On the second page you do have like different kind of versions. It's kind of funny, for example with digital memory, some of the games can even be found on different parts of the system. But now what we're going to get is just actually a light gun pointing at it and we can just start the game like that. So when it comes to the light gun games, the first thing you need to do is pointing it and calibrating it. And when you have done, you can just actually play and navigate through the menu. So shooting at the icons in the screen, we're going to have the option to play different kind of games. Here at the right side, we're going to find a red button that doesn't light up whatsoever. But when you're going to press it, it's going to be automatically recalibrating the device itself instantly. For example, now I have the feeling that my Corsa is not straight in the middle. So what I need to do is pressing the button and automatically calibrates it back to the moment that you want to be. Nevertheless, I think it's a little bit of a convenience that it sometimes happens. Not a big of a deal. Press of a button and you're automatically basically recalibrating it. Depending on the game, but some will give you the option to automatically go into the hard mode if you don't want to like have the basic simple levels in the beginning. And after every single stage, we're going to get ourselves an evaluation, how everything went, how fast, agility and of course the accuracy. Every single stage, you're going to get this result. What I did notice was no high score whatsoever, so it's just a moment that you're going to get the score and you're going to the next stage. Alright, so let's recalibrate it, especially when you're going to be sitting in a different position. There we go, alright, let's start normal. And when you're looking at the distance, I'm just playing this on a very tiny display. There we go. Oh crap, messed it up with that calibration! That's absolutely a very strange game. But with this game we just have infinite bullets, so we don't need to really reload anything at all. And this is just a combination of a light gun with Super Pang the arcade game. It's kinda cool. But every single game just have basically two different stages where we're going to switch between. And then of course the levels are going to be more difficult than the previous one. The only weird thing is if you want to go back to the main menu, the thing that we can do is like turn off the system itself or pressing the button over here on the light gun. Gives us the option to quit the game, but this only works when we're actually going to be in the game itself. You cannot do this in the high score level. We cannot use the button I already mentioned before, but when we're going to reload, it will bring you back from the title screen to the main menu itself. And what happens if you're going to put a Fruit Ninja game and we're going to combine this with a light gun? We're going to get Fruit Shooter. Yeah, the names are absolutely hilarious sometimes. And that's it when it comes to naming. We're just going to shoot fruit. The games are kind of basic, but fun. Oh, but yeah, if I'm touching the bomb, I'm game over. Okay. The naming itself is so freaking laughable. For example, with Annoying Bird, Split Bomb, that we tried before. But on this first page, there we do have a very cool game I wanted to try. It has some funny tunes to it. But let's calibrate it and let's go to the menu itself. And the thing I wanted to try out is Sharpshooter. It's basic, but it's a lot of fun. We just need to hit the targets, that's it. It's just a very basic game, but for this game we do need to reload. And I really love the shotgun reload for this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not going to show every single game, simply because there is so many to show you. Next thing I wanted to try out is the Street Gunman. Come on. There we go. We do have like a different sensitivity when it comes to the main menu and actually the game itself. So this is a different kind of game. They can actually shoot against and hit you. There is no way of adjusting the sensitivity. I do have an idea that it's going to play differently now. There we go. Oh, got it. But when it comes to the light gun kit, I must say that I am surprised how actually good it is. But let's get into the other part because there is so much more we can do with this freaking thing. 
because we don't need to forget the controller because this thing has so much more to offer this actually like a weak clone and light gun system in it in one it's kind of interesting to see how everything seems to be working let's go back and yeah you can boot up the game with the light without the light gun now it has been powered on but of course we cannot use the motion here or anything so that's actually what we're going to get with this see now it says no good and it automatically goes back but the controller is a very strange situation. You're just actually going to play it like this with the 16-bit games on here and also the 8-bit games. With some Wii, you're actually going to use like a nunchuck and the motion that is inside of this. But the controls are so weird. We do have A, B, C and D over here. This is the on and off switch. It automatically switches off if you don't use it. Then we're going to get ourselves the add logo. I think this was select and sometimes start for in some 8-bit games it was. The analog stick is also functioning like a D-pad, but I can tell you this thing plays quite nice. And of course, we do have two buttons over here, but this is more if you're going to use it when it comes to the Wii-looking games. But let's take a close look at the motion sport games. Yeah, this is kind of interesting, I tell you that. The configuration of the buttons are quite strange because the A is basically the D. It's messed up. But then we're going to get weird things like Happy Trampoline, Bowling, Super Fighters. Some of them have been seen on different clone systems with a different name, of course. Fruit Master, that's just a fruit ninja. They have something with goblins because, again, here we're having throwing goblins. Kind of weird, to be honest. And, of course, we're having darts. But let's try a couple of them. I must give them kudos for the music. The classic Bowling Funny. Or classic funny bowling. Uh, yeah, so let's see how funny actually this thing is. I can tell you already, it's going to be messy. So this is not the same stuff that we have seen before when you're looking at, let's say, the original Nintendo Wii. So what I'm actually going to get is the same Bullox or BS when it comes to the, let's say the Wii fake ones. With the original Wii, you need to have like some configuration going on. The only motion that I found this machine, let's see. Uh, which button do I need to even press to move on? Is it this? That? No. See, that's the first thing that I already found annoying. Oh, there we go. The first thing that we need to do is like configure everything. All right, let's put it in the middle. And the only motion we're having is this. That's it. That's the only motion that's actually motion about this. And the overall graphics look absolutely crap. Oh yeah, they absolutely ripped off the original soundtrack. See, that's the thing, you need to navigate with the four buttons at the bottom, but in the game we needed to press a different one. It's kind of interesting. But I'm curious how it is actually going to be working out. I have no idea what is going on here. No, I don't want to go out. There we go. Oh! Oh yeah. We just need to move it like that. Ninja! Fruit Ninja! Oh man, there isn't like a sensor in the inside, but it doesn't work at all. It's absolutely garbage. The next thing I want to check out is the Puzzle Classic games. So let's see what we're going to get with this craziness. There is so much weird stuff on here. So everybody fishing, tramp. Trample goblins, so again the goblins. I'm not going to check all of them out, but there are a couple of them that are kind of cool. Digital memory, that's the same, I think that's the same game that I've seen before when it comes to the light gun, so they're just reusing, mix, match, a couple of cool games. For example, the Everybody Lost Fishing or whatever it's called. It's kind of weird, let's, let's put it up. And they're just basic arcade games they implemented into the system. We have different kind of big webs that we can shoot. Let's say we have the big web. And we're just collecting the fish. Let's go back to number three. We have a number amount of webs that we can shoot. Let's get the big one. I must give them some extra credit again. There's some relaxing tunes to it. So this machine is filled with all kinds of weird games. We have one and two players set up. Let's see how we need to navigate through here. Get ready. Yep, I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, it's just like the, oh, the old school games that I've seen before. We need to stack up the kind of gems. There we go. Graphical wise, they look kind of basic. There's more columns, only now with one gem at a time. That's it. That's the only thing that we're going to get with this. 
Okay, mix match. I just wanted to check this one out. Ready? Oh, memory yeah. games. Oh, there, I have it. Okay, go. Oh man, I got these games on my PhotoPlay arcade cabinet. I love these things. But there's one particular part a lot of people will like and I think it's going to be the classic games of old school 8-bit games they even implemented. So this is like a 4 on one system in the end. The game list I did notice if you're going to look in closely I'm going to boot up a couple of games. There are a couple of different double ones. Not a big of a deal but it's unfortunate they keep doing it. Also like having a multi-game cartridge of Contra in here. It's, it's, it's kind of weird to be honest. But when you're looking at the overall like, game list, it's absolutely not bad at all. I'll give you like a quick scroll through it so you can see like what are we going to get. And some names are making no sense. Bird Week, Battle City, there are a lot of familiar ones. Seem to be in Captain America, I no idea what it is. Zombie Nation, a lot of homebrew games will be implemented in here. But that's basically it, what we're going to get. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, there is no Duck Hunt. But when you're looking at the game list, it's one big mess. For example, when you're turning up Adventure Island 2... You're going to get yourself Wrecking Crew. One of those many examples. There are even a game that have no sound that I've noticed. Holding the button, in this case the power button, it will bring you back to the main menu. And when trying different games, I'm finding more and more games that have no audio whatsoever. Unfortunate Turtles is one of those awesome games that you can play but have no audio. There was nothing to do about it. There was no way of getting into the emulator itself to fix the issue. So yep, we're finally finding something here that they completely mess up. It's a little bit of a bummer, or a little bit, it's a big bummer to be honest. And when I keep deep diving into the list, finding all of my favorite NES games, and again, and there is no audio whatsoever. And I can tell you, this is absolutely the conclusion that it's going to be a pile of nonsense playing the 8-bit stuff. They completely messed it up, and wow, I had like a random input. This is just one freaking nightmare. I'm a big fan of light guns and I just wanted to check this thing out. And I must say I am not really disappointed when it comes to the features of the light gun itself. It's basic, it's just a plug and play solution. For example when you're looking at the light gun or the pistol itself, it's a very cool piece of novelty. And the load up and everything works great. Of course you need to recalibrate it sometimes, it's something we need to live with. There is no calibration or adding, let's say new features to this, it's just what you see is what you're going to get. Yeah and the technology it's super basic, it's not like the best experience, but again for the money we can't complain. The motion control is absolutely laughable. I really like the 32-bit like basic games. And when it comes to the 8-bit, they completely dropped the ball with there. So unfortunate, that would be a cool extra bonus. Let me know in the comments what you think of a device like this. Would you pick it up? Thank you for watching and it would be great to see you in the next video.